and you're watching ZTV on the Higher Learning Network. Got your head right. How about that? Share our wisdom. Share our wisdom. Share our talent. Share our kindness. Share our love. Yeah. You can meet Naima Latif every morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, and we bring you stimulating discussions about the field. It's not robots for the mind. If you're listening online at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the dash female dash salute. All right. Welcome to Monday Morning Mindfulness. Welcome to the Female Solution, Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. We are just here for you to start your week off with the Mindfulness Stress Relief Session coming up at 7.15. So be sure and text somebody and let them know that we're on right now. We're waiting for you to join us in a day of celebration because we made it here to this day. There were a lot of people over the weekend who made their transitions. Most of us call it death, but it's simple, a physical exchange of energy from transforming from this body, this vessel, this vehicle, and into another level of existence because electricity is what we are and electricity never dies it simply transforms into another source so don't believe me do your homework as Viata would say happy earth day birthday born day if today is your birthday and we are always uh, saying uh, keeping in prayer for the sick and shut in and those who have been affected by the pandemic. COVID-19, and we are also celebrating from this past weekend, the Juneteenth 
memorial. I was listening to a, a show last night with Dr. Carter and Karen Hunter, and they said something that just made so much sense to me, and they were talking about Juneteenth commercializing it. They were saying that nine times out of 10, and I've seen it already, there's a movie called Miss June, Juneteenth, to commercialize it, to make money off of it. I mean, really? Really? Yeah, well, this is America and this is what, what's done here. Anyway, um, it's National Blackout Week this week in America. I don't know about the world, but I do know about America. So I want to share with you what was shared with me because we need to know that if there's to be some economic recovery in this country, it, we may live to see reparations and we may not. But until that happens in the meantime and between time, this is the plan for national economic withdrawal. And it's began on Friday, June 19th, uh, where we celebrated June 19th, excuse me, Juneteenth. And also my cousin Michelle's birthday. Happy birthday, cuz, Michelle Carey. And we celebrated with her yesterday at Cousin Hattie's house and Cousin Hattie always throw down. So uh, I think I'm gonna fast today, yeah. I know I'm gonna fast. I didn't eat any meat. I still am a vegan uh, experience. That spaghetti was good and the potato salad. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Did I, did I talk about the cabbage and the corn? Oh, yes. You know, I love me some cabbage and corn. Anyway, I digress. So let me go back to um, Sunday. Yesterday was the first day, June 21st. Boycott big chain and department stores like Walmart, Sam's Club, Target, such things of that nature. Today is Monday, June 22nd. It's day two. So it says boycott fast food and chain restaurants like McDonald's, Popeye's, Hip Hop, I never heard of Hip Hop, Checkers, stores of that nature. Uh, day three will be Tuesday, which is tomorrow, June 23rd, boycott online shopping, Amazon, Fashion Nova, Snickers, whoever that is, and all the others, Shopify and the others too. On uh Day four, which is Wednesday, boycott supermarkets, giant shoppers, price, right, all of these, etc. Avoid them. Because that's the only way to show the, the, the power of your finances. Day five would be Thursday, June 25th, repeat days one and two. And on Friday, June 26th, repeat days three and four. In June 26th, which is Friday, that's my niece's birthday. Gotta send you a shout out. Happy birthday, Anita uh, Bradley. We call her Anita. But anyway, happy birthday. Happy Earth Day, birthday, born day. And day seven, Saturday, June 27th, do not spend any money all day, period. Did you hear that? Well, if you didn't, I'll post it on my website because it's green. Knock it out, block it out. So uh, that's a bit of news update for you. On Friday, there was a press conference uh, at the Daily Center with Minister Robert Floyd Plump. And after that, we walked over to Grant Park. The city officials were marching for the Juneteenth celebration in honor of George Floyd. And that was until 2 p.m. While Mama D, you have to go to her page, and I'll post that on my page because I don't know the exact link. Mama D, I went to Minnesota in honor of George Floyd and Naima may call in at some time if I get this wrong and correct me. Uh, it was a salute. They went to the place where he was murdered and her story was that white women need to join this movement because white mothers need to I don't want to say that wrong. Naima, you need to call in. <laughs> okay. White mothers need to need, need to adopt. I don't want to say that wrong, so I'm just not going to say it. I'll do my, do my due diligence after because I spilled the paper, everything, so I can't even read my hand, own handwriting. But I'll post that on my link. I just thought that was powerful. And she called in while we were uh, live on the air Friday, uh, Saturday. No, Friday we were at the, the march in Chicago. Saturday, it was uh, Basu Farms. We traveled down to um, Pembroke, Illinois, myself and uh, 
Naima Latif, Executive Director of the Female Solution, and my Ika, let's talk about it with my Ika, she was already there. She spent the night there. They did camping. I was like, ooh, Lord, I can't do the mosquitoes and the bugs, but because they were there, you know, I lived in the South and I had enough of those. <clears throat> but, you know, it was an experience. I got back to nature, did some ground. It was awesome, awesome experience. And we're going to start having retreats there. It's Basu Farms, Basu Natural Farms in Pembroke, Illinois. And that was an experience. That information is on my blog, Zelda Robinson Speaks.blogspot.com. I was trying to upload it. The pictures for some reason wouldn't upload. But anyway, I'm going to make a TV show out of it. So you'll still get a chance to see it. And I'll work on that more this week as well. And we met a fascinating lady by the name of Estella on Friday at the um, Juneteenth celebration. I can't remember her last name, but she was, you'll see her in the video. She had on this beautiful, I want to say orange, but it's really coral, which is a cousin to, or, to, to orange. You got to see it. That's all I got to say. Anyway, very interesting sister. She was an artist. And after that, we went to lunch right there on Michigan Avenue and Congress. Just sat down for like three, four hours and just talked and just sat in the sun. I'm loving it. The sun is baking it on us and we're moving over. Lord have mercy. It was an experience. I had a, I had a great time. So thank you for all the community who came out. And there is an effort going on right now for community policing. That is the agenda. And there's a prayer vigil tonight at 7 p.m., 79th and Dan Ryan, due to all the deaths over the weekend. Well, you know, it's hot. People have been locked up. And, you know, the system has it designed. Give them some guns. Keep, them, keep guns in the community so we can keep them killing themselves. And that's exactly what's happening. Anyway, the lakefront is reopening. Did I mention today's topic? I am, I, I am just so, so elated to have this going on at this time. Racism and mental health with 30-year mental health professional Khalid Scott. And he's going to correct me. It's his elder name, 27 or 28. I'm going to say 30 because I'm just rounding it off like they do anything else. If you are a man of African descent in this country, you've already got an extra five or 10 years on you just from the mental health stress and the hell you've been put through in this society. So I'm going to stick to what I said, mental health uh, professionals from the last 30 years. Anyway, uh, salute to him. He'll be joining us in the eight o'clock hour. And also a salute to his daughter, my goddaughter, my adopted goddaughter. Um, I'm going to bring on... Um, this wonderful man who's a single parent of Princess Anaya Scott of Kenwood Academy. She just graduated. She's a pre-med major and a neuroscience minor. So I guess you can tell that she's going to be, we're going to have a physician in the family, another physician in the family. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you very much. So congratulations for being a single dad a great single day and happy belated father's day to all the fathers, uncles, nephews, brothers who help raise the children in our communities who are in need of a father. Cause I never had a father figure. Many never had a father figure. And I, I always thought I was the only one. No, you are not alone. This is rampant. And it was designed that way with the system. Remember Claudine? See the movie. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, if you're listening online, we'd love to have you join us this morning on facebook.com. 515-605-9325. Press one to speak so I can open your mic. We're at Facebook, Zelda Speaks. And on Twitter and Instagram, it's Zelda Speaks, the number two and the letter U. Zelda Speaks, two and the letter U. Okay. And also check out my blog. I just told you about it. Bossu Farm, Zelda Robinson Speaks, that blogspot.com and Higher Learning Network, nfp.blogspot.com. That's our YouTube channel is Higher Learning Network TV show channel, okay? And be sure and check us out on Tuesday. Mike will be talking about oh, the difference between girlfriends and wives. That should be interesting. Yes, and on Wednesday, Naima Latif and Kareem Hamid repairing family relationships. And Thursday, Family Matters with Wendy, Wendy City Deloach. Wendy City 
Williams Deloach, our Esquire, our attorney at law here, and Friday Health and Wellness with Viata. And Viata was on last night too with Soul Purpose Healing. And that was a very interesting show talking about Marxism and racism and the whole systemic isms that's going on in the world. Okay. So be sure and check it out. Let us take a quick look at the traffic which is and weather, which is brought to you by Karen Kelly of itex.com, I-T-E-X dot com. You can get uh, equipment and supplies and travel, anything else you need with itex.com. You simply add uh, my name, Zelda, Z-E-L-D-A, and you get a $100 bonus to go shopping immediately. That's for business owners and entrepreneurs if you have a product or service. And if you are headed out and about today, uh, late morning and afternoon, there's evening rain, even though it's going to be in the 80s today, 85 today. There are no delays on uh, Metra, but CTA and PACE resumes regular boarding, so you don't have to board from the back. And they're offering free health kits, I think today uh, from 8 until 10 a.m., mask and sanitation. So that's from CTA. But there is a delay in Uptown. The red and purple lines have been shut down from Belmont to Howard, and they are evacuating passengers. They had to walk down a scalpel. I was like, really? To shuttle buses due to stranded trains. So that's what's going on. As we take a look at inbound on the Kennedy, is 26 minutes. There are delays. Uh, the IDOT is out there due to some construction issues. So it's 26 inbound, 20 outbound on the Edens, 24 in, 21 out. On the Eisenhower, it's slow at Mannheim, 26 in and 24 on the reverse. 26 on the Stevenson and 21 on the reverse. On the Dan Ryan, 12 in both directions. Bishop Ford, the same, and Lakeshore Drive, 10 minutes in and 11 out. That's your traffic and web sponsored by Karen Kelly of itex.com. And you'll be happy to know that indoor dining reopens Friday and sales were down 80%. So I am sure restaurant owners are eager to get back in business. I met a, um, what was his name? Dolphin, Dolphin, D-O-L-P-H-N of Dan's Foods. Chicago, 2523 West 79th Street, awesome brother, talked about how he set his mom up in the restaurant business 28 years ago, and they're still going strong, and they were not affected by corona at all. He said their business even increased. Wow, that's powerful. See, when you're in touch with the universe, and you're eating good, healthy food, breathing good prana, which is what we were, what we were about to do now, as soon as I read you the word from the day, take it from my ethos book. You ever heard of this book? Well, you have now. The Nonviolent Right to Vote Movement Almanac. And I'm going to read to you from page 377. It says, slavery is a system that grows out of mankind's need to feel safe, secure, and prosperous while disconnected from source. The system of slavery permeates all spec aspects of a person's life to the de degree that while caught up in it, they have a feeling of freedom. As they move from one level to another, the system is all so invasive that it appears to be sane to those enslaved within it. Really? The slave's only ambition is to achieve the position and status of master over others. That's by Helen L. Bevel. You know who Helen L. Bevel is? Let's talk about it with Maika tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 a.m right here on the female solution but this is the book it is an almanac for sure and it is ooh, there is so much history in here this is the book you need the Nonviolent right to vote movement almanac you want more information just contact me i'll 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 send you where to get the book right now it is 7 19 and we are about to do our breathing exercise this morning because It is imperative that we take time for ourselves 
So let us prepare because breath, as Dr. Maya Angelou would say, is your first line of defense. So when you are stressed out, if you can breathe your way through a situation, chances are you'll survive. So let us become still, sit straight up in your chair, feet flat on the floor, nothing in your hands, but feel free to wriggle those hands, wiggle those shoulders, wiggle that neck if you can. You know, get the, uh, what's the fluid called, Viata? Uh, some, something fluid, uh, some jovial fluid or something to get it moving in the body. Wiggle those toes, anything. But anyway, close your eyes. Sit up straight if you can, feet flat on the floor, nothing in your hands, and simply begin the process of breathing in and breathing out. Count to yourself. Inhale to five. Hold it. And exhale, pushing that air out. You're gonna do the same thing, breathing right back in. Inhale to five. One. Hold it. And exhale. See, you're feeling better already. Count to yourself. Count out loud, doesn't matter. Inhale deeply, two, three, four, five. Hold it, and exhale. Feel your body calming down? Yeah, I know you're feeling good already. Close your eyes, you should not be looking at me. You should only be looking at the inside of your eyelids. So close those eyes, and inhale deeply. Giving thanks for the power of the breath. As you exhale, release, let go, and give thanks. As you continue to breathe in, counting to five on your own, holding and exhaling, giving thanks for the breath, that you do not have a trachea in your throat. You do not have a tube in your throat to help the air come through your nose, your mouth, and your throat so that you can breathe freely. You are one of the blessed ones. Yes, you are. Not to say that those that have a tube in their chest are not blessed. They are blessed. They are still here. But you can breathe freely, and that does make a difference as you inhale deeply. Giving thanks that you are simply energy, light, love, and lots of energy as you make your way through this passage we call life. This journey that sometimes takes us to places where we feel and have experiences that we are not particularly fond of, but we know that we can breathe our way through them as we inhale deeply giving thanks for the power of the breath, knowing that we are eternal love, eternal light, and eternal energy. As we inhale deeply, bringing that energy up to the top of the head, and as we slowly breathe out, sending that energy down from the forehead and the face and the chin and the neck, and the shoulders continuing to breathe in. And as we breathe out, relaxing the shoulders, focusing on the breath, and the mind has a tendency to wander as it does. And then when it does, you simply say out loud, thinking, and bringing the focus back on the breath, breathing through the nose, inhale deeply. And exhale, sending that energy down back through the chest, the solar plexus sides and the hips and the thighs as we inhale and as we exhale sending that energy on down through the thighs and the knees and the legs and the arches and the ankles and the insteps and the bottom of the feet and the toes feel free to wiggle those toes as we inhale deeply through the nose as we give thanks for the power of the breath because deep breathing expands the lungs. It triggers the receptors in the body, especially the happiness gene. Yes, as we inhale deeply. And exhale, feel the power of the energy circulating and percolating throughout the body as it continues to come back up through the solar plexus and the shoulders and the arms and the elbows 
and the fingers and the wrists feel free to wiggle them, sending that energy back up through the neck and back to the top of the head as we inhale deeply. Giving thanks for the power of the breath as we send love and light and energy to each and every organ in our body, beginning with the brain that sends signals down through the spine to the heart, to the liver. Oh yes, we give thanks for the lungs. As we continue to inhale and exhale, sending that divine energy down to all the systems in the body, especially the assimilation, the digestion and elimination system so that we continue to have good bowel movements. Yes, I'm talking about the systems that keep us functioning because there's no bowel movement, people. There's something wrong. We can talk about it later. Send me an email. I can get you all the information that you need to get that body flowing because what's stuck in you stays in you and that's not a good thing. We got to keep it moving as we inhale deeply. Sending energy, light, and love to all the tissues, the fibers, the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles, and all the trillions of cells that make up the beautiful, bountiful, sensational body of light that is known by what you are called light and love and energy as you continue to inhale deeply and exhale and repeat the words out loud two of the most powerful words on the planet i am and you may choose to continue to breathe and repeat the words, whatever you choose, but be sure and use the words, I am. Inhale deeply. I am happy. Release. Inhale deeply. I am healthy. Yes, I am. Inhale deeply. I am whole and complete. Once more, inhale. I am eternal light, love, and energy. I breathe in the divine as I inhale. And as I exhale, I release and let go as I connect to the source that I may choose to call God, Allah, Yahweh, Jehovah, source, electrical energy, Jehovah Jireh, Baha faith, whatever you choose to call it, know that you are connected to a source that is so divine, you cannot see it with the human eye. You can only feel it when you breathe in and when you breathe out. And remember when you're wearing a mask and you can't breathe in, it's okay to lower the mask so that you can breathe. Do not die, people, because you are breathing through something that is designed to hide your glory, your breath, your light, your love, your energy. Connect to the source through the breath as you breathe in. The breath will always guide you. It will never, ever, ever steer you wrong. As you continue to breathe in, I've just got to share this quick story. A young man on Facebook I'm watching this morning who was paralyzed. And he got up and he said, I am going to walk today through the power of Yah. And he walked a whole block. You see him stumble all the way but he made it. And if he can do it with the power of the mind, so can you. As we breathe in, last long breath, as we breathe out, I forgive myself for any thoughts that I think that are in error of myself or anyone else. I release, let go, and let God 
whatever I choose to call it. Breathe in. And as I breathe out, I forgive and release any negative thoughts, situations, family members. I let it all go right now because that is not what I am here for. I breathe in. And as I breathe out, I bring my head forward, chin to chest, slowly rotating that head to the left, slowly, slowly, slowly bringing it around. Slow down, you're moving too fast as you continue to breathe in. And breathe out, you should just be getting to the back and slowly bringing the head around to the right and slowly bringing it back front, chin up, inhale deeply. And exhale, bringing your head back down, chin to chest, slowly rotating that head to the right, sitting up straight so you don't get a crook in your back. Slowly bringing the head around to the back, slowly, slow down, slowly, slowly bringing that head to the left and slowly bringing that head back around to the right. Head up, inhale deeply. And as you exhale, turn your head to the left as far as you possibly can, feeling a stretch in the right of the neck. Bringing the head back front and center, inhale deeply. And exhale, turning the head to the right as far as you pick possibly can, feeling the stretch in the left of the neck. And slowly bringing that head back around. Inhale deeply once more. And as you breathe out, forgive yourself for all the things that you thought that were not of love and abundance and appreciation. As we breathe in, and as we breathe out. And today I want you to look into a mirror and say, I forgive myself for thinking anything less than love and light, because that's what I am. That's who you are. As you breathe in, you connect with the source, and that is your armor. Thank you, Dr. Maya Angelou. As you put on the armor of God, know that you are divinely guided and protected. So when you are experiencing, you can open your eyes now. When you are experiencing chaos, turmoil, or someone is all in your face trying to stress you out, you simply start the breathing process. And I promise you, if you got a little stank on your breath, little onions, little garlic, little something that don't, don't smell good, then you'll be just fine. So just breathe in and you simply breathe out. And that's really all you have to do, okay? It is 7.32. Thank you so much for joining me this for this uh, breathing experience this morning. You can see more on my YouTube channel, Zelda Speaks Mindfulness. And be sure and like and subscribe while you're there. And share this with people that you know, because when they're stressed, they stress you. If you are not stressed, chances are they will feel your calm energy and they will join you in times of peace and that's what we need in our lives more peace grand rising and thank you so much for joining us back here on the female solution welcome to monday morning mindfulness higher learning with zelda speaks we're just here to start your week off with the mindfulness stress relief session and i hope you enjoyed the stress relief session this morning because that is something that you can practice without with not even really giving it a whole lot of thought. You simply just, just, when you start, your mind goes into crazy mode. Just say, if you need to say it out loud, just say stop and start breathing. Simple. It's real simple. And be sure and share that with somebody because each one teach one. If I teach you how to become, you can teach somebody else and eventually it'll have the, the trickle effect and we'll all become calm. We'll all be less nervous and anxious about this pandemic that's going on. Be sure and check out the Higher Learning Network TV show, which airs Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 1 on Channel 19, and 24-7 on the World Wide Web, higherlearningnetwork.org. And while you're there on the internet, be sure and check out diabeticdonut.com. Sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? Yeah. Diabetes, diabetics eating donuts. Mm -hmm. Well, diabetics do eat donuts. I ate, ate them for 10 years, and didn't. that's how I got diabetes. Well... Amongst all the other cakes and pies and all the other junk food I was eating. Grew, grew up on junk food, so you may be a diabetic and not know it, so go to 
diabeticdonut.com. And you'll get, there's information there for you. If you'd like to join the conversation this morning, we'd love to have you. Coming up in the eight o'clock hour, we will have our guest today, Khalid Scott, mental health, excuse me, a veteran mental health a professional, 30 year mental health professional who works at the, right there on Damon and what is it, Ogden, the Veterans uh, Hospital. And he will be joining us in the eight o'clock hour. So we have a half hour to get your comments and suggestions in this weekend. Um, this, this day, I was talking about this weekend and all the wonderful activities that I participated in. Had no idea I'd be doing a walk. I'm like, baby, I'm in my 60s. Uh, I don't know if I want to be walking 56 miles, but I can walk a little bit, so I went to the to uh, to the to the press conference, and I wound up over in uh, over in Dearborn, and then I wind up over in Michigan Avenue. I had no idea. Oh Lord, have mercy! That was a lot of folks, and it was hot. I got so hot, I had to go and sit down. Somebody uh, offered me the chance. Uh, to sit in their seat. I was like, no, baby, I need to sit on the ground. I need some water. I need to get grounded because it's hot out here and it's chaos and I just need to be by myself. So I found me a treat and I went and sat down. Somebody gave me a bottle of water and I was just fine. And I sat there the rest of the time. I had filmed and uh, I did Facebook Live so you'll be able to see it on my Facebook page, Zelda Speaks. And it was just... The energy was awesome. That's all I can say. The energy was simply awesome. You have got to see it. And I started a watch party. So, so if you can't see it, just look for my watch party because it was there. If you'd like to join the conversation this morning, we'd love to have you here. 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak. As we go to the phone lines this morning, area code 706202. What happened to my uh, switchboard? There you go. Uh, 706-202, you are live on the Female Solution Grand Rising. What's your name and where are you calling from? Thank you for joining us. Grand Rising, this is Elga. This is Kwame. I'm calling you from Georgia. Oh, this new day? wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It is an honor and a privilege to have another elder on the line who is, has such a wealth of information. I, I get excited every time I listen to Viata's show, especially last night talking about Marxism and racism and all the other isms in the world. Thank you for coming on and sharing. You gave um, um, an acronym last night and I forgot what it was. I was in the bed too lazy to get up and uh, write it down, but I'm sure I'll hear it at some point today. But we're, today's topic is racism and mental health and how it's affecting us. Can you share with us how this topic is affecting you, Kwame? Well, I'm overstanding the, the creation of racism and, and even the part of overstanding the ism. The ism is the ill sick mind. Mm. And, and you mm. put that ism on alcoholism, sexism, racism. It's because the sickness that is in the person and the actions that they do towards whatever the, the noun is. And so, an overstanding this is that, you know, it was kind of good that, that we ought to have to show that, you know, Thank God was said once, why should I live for my life <laughs> that you're going to be human, that white people are going to be human today? Mm. And that, that's the true respect is that, that we have to understand, you know, and us risking our lives and thinking that maybe they'll be human today. They haven't been. Mm. You know, it's by design because they have that deal. Not all. Yes. That, that too. And the part of it is, is that we define ourselves with these, these new labels and saying Black Lives Matter. But you have to look at how would you, you define that that says uh, a color. But the essence of it is, is that the first humans matter. Mm. And we are the first humans. And it matters because these are our, our, our aberrant children. And, and what they have done in their ill sick minds has created a system of destruction from a spiritual level because when you talk about mental illness, you're talking about the psyche, and psyche means spirit. 
mm. you know, Freud formulated this whole thing of being an Egyptologist and studying comedic knowledge. And so what we have to understand that this is a system of design to perpetuate fear. Mm. And what we had this weekend with, with Trump being there in Tulsa, and even when we were talking on uh, the other show and talking about Bobby Rush and the 666 bill that he did, but, you know, six months before this, he was in, in Rwanda, him and his wife, at the Bill Gates Foundation, and they funded this. So all of this is by design. Mm. And of the two places that they, they chose to do this is because what you said when you were on this walk and you, you, you had to get grounded, you went and found the tree, you sat on the earth, you got up all the water. Water has memory and consciousness. Earth has resonating frequency and tree is a tree of life. So what you did is you reconnected to the mother. You regrounded yourself. You, you reconnected yourself back to the earth. And what this system has done is disconnected us from the earth and, mm. and creating these urban areas and creating these places and spaces where you're not connected to the mother, but you're distorted in frequencies of, of electromagnetic fields. Mm. And that affects the heart and the mind. Mm. And so what we're seeing is is like what 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 uh Sister Naima wrote in her book, you know, Psychic Trauma. And it was it's, it's funny because one of the parts I remember is that African Americans must study the positive <laughs> attitudes and behavior which strengthened families before slavery destroy African culture. Mm. And that's what we're dealing with because, and, and Sojourner Truth, this is why I say we need an overground railroad, because Sojourner, Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman were dealing, they were advocates for the, the spiritual reform. Spiritual is the mind, is the, the spirit is connected to the mind, the mind is connected to the body. When you disconnect the spirit from the mind, you disconnect and the body begins to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. They have to be unified because that's how you grew. You were a spirit that entered into the, the realm of a woman and then you were given the, the honor to grow a body in which to use to walk upon this earth with. And so what we're seeing is, is they're attacking this, this body. They, they captivate, they, cap, they put us in captivity. Mm -hmm. And then they utilized our energy, you know, and that's why I say when, when Naima was talking about money, the Bitcoin and that, that that's energy, that's mm -hmm. electronic money. But it's my own natural energy field. It's what you know how to emit the frequency of your electrical system as a human being. You have a currency that you run on. And the part of being it is that if they can drain your battery, mm -hmm. Yes. But you have to, you have to, you have to leave that part of you. You have to disconnect, and they are mastering this out of your mind uh, technology. And so, what we are looking at with this, you know, and I was looking at, you know, one of the great minds that was dealing with that was Bobby E. Ray, and Bobby was talking about the the psychopathic racial personality. Mm. We we've been trained to hate ourselves. Yes. We have been trained to hate ourselves and anyone that looks like us. And what we're doing now is that, like Bruce Lipton said, you can reprogram your DNA. Mm. And this is what you have to begin to know how to do. And like you did, you reprogram that energy that you was in that was chaotic and whatever. You program the program for you says go get by the tree, drink some water, sit on the earth. Mm. Because when you sit on the earth, that's your root chakra connected to the root of that tree. Mm. My root chakra was connected to the root of that tree. Yes. When you sit, when you sit on the earth, that 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 that's the root chakra. The 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 bark that 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 part is where the root is. Mm. And so when we sit on the earth, we in turn reconnect to the root, and that frequency runs up that spinal cord and re-energizes all of those other six that, that are connected in your endocrine system. So each one is a brain. 
Mm. Each one of the endocrine system is the brain. It sends a signal to the main motherboard, which is the brain in there, and it navigates through, you know, uh, friendship, companionship. It, it moves through the waters of your mind. Mm. Mm. And those neural nets in which we, we have are such charged because I was listening to you doing the breathing exercise, and it's very powerful in the breath because thing in which you do. The human being breathes 18 breaths in a minute. Wow. The use of 18 breaths in that one minute, and it takes 60 minutes to make an hour, 18 times 60 minutes is 1,080. And it takes 24 hours for a day. So that 1,080 times 24 equals 25,920 and that's the same amount of time in a, in a galactic year that it takes this planet to go around the Milky Way galaxy and come back. And that's what it takes the human in breath to travel around this Milky Way within this body. Wow. Did you hear that? I am just hearing that for the first time. Wow. I never heard the breath broken down like that, Kwame. That is simply fascinating. And I am so glad to know that this breathing exercise is what helped me uh, during that little chaos and confusion it, uh, because as I was on my way to go and sit in the grass, uh, one of my bid with uh, family members that I seen, had not seen, was visiting here from, Chicago, from uh, California. And she said, go sit over there on the back of one of those little dollies they ride through the park uh, for the Chicago Park District. You know, they have help, looks like a golf cart. And I was like, no, nah, I think I just need to sit on the ground. And I'm so glad I listened to my inner spirit that told me to go sit on the ground because once I sat on the ground, I felt better immediately. The ground was cold, it was hot outside, and someone gave me some cool water and I sat there and I felt so good. It's like, it's almost like, uh, like euphoria. It's like something came over me. And, and now that I'm thinking about what you talked about, the root chakra uh, connecting to the root of the tree, how I, I did feel a little tiny tingle in my body. And I just, you know, I just thought it was just, I was just hot and, you know, my body was just cooling itself off. But now that I, you, you explain how the root chakra is connected to the root of the tree, and that frequency ran up my spinal cord. I felt that. So thank you for explaining that. So now I know what, wh why I felt the way I felt. And then after, after that, I couldn't get off the ground. I tried to get up, but the ground, this, the ground wouldn't let me up. Because actually, you know, uh, uh, Naeem and I were, were still there. And she was still filming. And I'm like, she'll share her footage with me. I don't have to get up and get the rest of this. So I just sat there and just listen and just absorb and stay there on the ground. And that was an experience I have never ever had before. So thank you for sharing that information about grounding. And that's something that we can all do on a daily basis. And, and as you say, on the concrete jung jungle that we're living in, we, we really need to, to move beyond that and get into a space of but this is why I chose to say about Harriet Tubman and the Overground Railroad, because what we had just this weekend, we had the new moon and the, the solar, the summer solstice, and also we had a solar eclipse. Mm. And so what we're seeing is that in that energy of that, we understand that in, in, in learning to be spiritual, we have to understand ritual. And they do rituals very well. This is why they have certain days in which they perform and have you to participate because they tap into our energy. Mm. So, and those thousands of people in that rally, it was tapping into that energy that was there and, and suppressing the energy of those ancestors that are in that land. Mm. Because those ancestors are still there and they haven't been atoned to. We have not been atoned. We've been making memorials, but we haven't done the ritual of atoning and forgiving. Mm. Or to free that energy that it would run through the earth. This is why the, the, the 
Lynching Museum in Montgomery was created because it was created from the Apartheid Museum in South Africa. They copied because of the children and, and the atrocity that was done in South Africa, Apartheid. Mm. And so we made the museum what Ida B. Wells so eloquently was doing all the time she was fighting. And her fighting for what? The lynching law. They will not pass that Rand Hall, I mean, Rand Paul is blocking them having the Emmett Till lynching law put into to law through the, through the government of this land. Mm. And so what we're seeing is, is because it's not over. It, it, that was Trump's whole rally is to, to, to make America, is to put that, that energy back into the earth on this third line and to get those minds to think that they are the superior and that's the ism, mm. the ill sick mind. Mm. And so what he's doing is that he's just a puppet for the perpetuators of the new technocrats because the the, the, the Gates and, and, and the Rockefellers were the ones who were funding Bobby to do the, the, the bill in order for them to get hard blind to now be able to say that we and there's an app that comes on your phone. Apple and Google have gotten together and Android. You can go on your phone. If you download the, the latest app information to your phone, you can go in privacy. Go to the health part in your privacy. Click on health and you will see COVID-19 uh, tracking information. Mm, wow. So it, it's already been put into the system. And these are the designs of what they're doing in social behavior control. It's, this is the new form of communism mm. because this is what's going on in China. Mm. So what we're seeing now, this is the new slave trade. Mm. It's because this is why I said about Ruha Benjamin, mm. when she would put race and technology. These are the new Jim Crow's. We had the Jim Crow when we came out of, of slavery. And see, the thing that we celebrated the 155th year of uh, Juneteenth was not Granger reading that, that it was Granger reading that, that uh, executive order number three and saying that the proclamation was your, but can you imagine, and this, this is Brother Carr was speaking on this, on, on, on him and Karen lessons by Carr. And he was speaking, he said, there were nine regiments of black troops that were brought to to feed that. Can you imagine those people in the field seeing black men on horses with guns? Mm. Terrifying. It wasn't terrifying, it was freedom because they knew that they, they had heard the rumors, but to see it in actuality, to see black men coming to free them. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's powerful. Right. That was a powerful. That was a powerful moment. But those people that that didn't know what freedom was going to look like, mm. the first thing they saw when it came to them with their blue uniforms and black faces on horses and carrying guns was freedom. And didn't expect to see that at all. It, it, right, but if you if you don't if you that's that's reason enough for celebration forever. Mm. And we, we, we're just now tapping back into it. I, I learned about Bill uh, and Pete in, in 68 when I went and lived in, in San Antonio, Texas. Mm. Mm. And I discovered yesterday, and I heard it said on Viata's show last night, too, that a lot of people just really didn't know what Juneteenth meant, and they just didn't have a clue. So I am so glad that the world is waking up to the information that we, go ahead but we did know we we did know but we didn't know mm. and the way in which we we do certain things is just like we we you know we do african tradition and don't know it's african tradition because it's, it's in our dna and it's in our conscious record brothers and i, I was guilty brothers standing on the corner and the first thing they do when they open the bible i'm pulling out for the one Yes. Yes, I've seen it. African tradition. 
I've then we turn around and we get we get this and and on on uh, December thirty first, eighteen sixty two, people went to church in the north and began to pray, and they call it the watch night because they were watching the clock till it got to midnight because then they knew everybody was was free because the emancipation it took place January first, eighteen sixty three, and then we turned around. And we got free, and it began to start. And men and families, people start going and looking for their families. And then when they found them, they would come in the church and celebrate. And what do they have in churches now today? The homecoming. Yes. That came from 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 that came from the emancipation homecoming because you celebrated your your child has come back home, your husband has come back home, your brother has been found, and he's back home with the family. Mm-hmm. And that was the place that you did the celebration of homecoming. And then when we, when we turned around and got people, got their families together, what did they do? They had family reunion. That yes. was the way we celebrated the, the, the whole part of the emancipation. All of those things came out of that emancipation. Female Solution. Welcome to Monday Morning Mindfulness. We're just here to start your week off with the Mindfulness Stress Relief Session. It is Monday! Happy birthday, birthday, born day! If today's your birthday, we're celebrating life here on the Female Solution. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Lee Scott, awesome, awesome father. Happy belated Father's Day, all the fathers in the world. Awesome, awesome, awesome father that I know and I'm honored <laughs> on being a wonderful dad, a single parent of Princess, I call her Princess Ayana. <laughs> Just graduated from Kenwood, you know, Kenwood Academy. I, I talk about it like she man, because she is man, because we are a village. Hello. Yes. Have you seen Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You not YouTube, uh, um, LinkedIn page, Khalid Scott, K H A L I D Scott, and see his lovely daughter. See him, check out so you'll know who's who's on the show today. But this is his, his lovely daughter. Can you see that? <laughs> and I just commend you for being the powerful man that you are because the world doesn't showcase that, so it is our responsibility to showcase that. So that's what we are doing. So thank you, thank you. Thank you for not only being uh, a guest on the show, a regular mental health contributor, but being for being an awesome dad. Because I can see it in your face, and I can see it in her face, and I was like, "Oh, I want to be a dad." <laughs> <laughs> not even a day, just for an hour, because I can see the love. I absolutely, can- absolutely, <laughs> and it's and it's fun. It's funny you should bring up the subject of Father's Day because um yesterday. We went to Walgreens uh, because Anaya needed to pick me up a Father's Day card. Well, when we got to Walgreens, they had already cleared out the Father's Day cards. Of course, of course. On Father's Day. Yeah. Now, you know, typically on Mother's Day, they still got cards the week after. Yes. You know? Yes. yes. And then when we walked up to the checkout, you know, I remember on Mother's Day, the, um, the the checkout clerk saying, you know, every woman that came up to the counter, happy Mother's Day. Just to, you assume that it's Mother's Day for that mother. Okay. And so the young lady didn't say anything. I mean, I said, well, you all don't say happy Father's Day to fathers. And the young lady said this. She said, well, every man isn't a father. Okay. And I said, well... Every woman has an, uh, isn't a mother. She said, no, more, more than likely a woman is a mother, whether biological or not, but you all are not daddies. Mm. And I said, wow. wow. And Anaya was standing right next to me, so clearly I'm a dad. And so she ended up saying, well, sir, I'm sorry. Happy Father's Day. But it reminded me all over again how insignificant fathers are made mm-hmm, mm-hmm, to feel. Mm-hmm. And partially it's our fault because you don't have daddies go out like I do. Mm-hmm. You know, we tend to let mamas handle the yes, business. Yes, you yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. So if we want people to give us respect, we got to show up. Yes, yes. And you got to show up. up. And you were showing up. And there are many others. Absolutely. Not- and like my husband, who just walked in the door this morning, he's a daddy too. Happy Father's Day again, baby. 
<laughs> so I know who you are, uh, Khalid, but many of our viewers or listeners don't know who you are. So if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and what qualifies you to talk about racism and mental health today. Okay, well, first and foremost, I'm a black man in America and, and been here next month. 51 years right. so I've had a wealth of experience regarding racism and being black and being made to feel devalued mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and from other races mm -hmm. also for 27 years come August I've been a licensed clinical social worker slash therapist slash case manager slash administrator. So I'm in the helping people business. Mm. And my caveat, or my number one caveat is mental health, especially for people of color, mm. because we need it. We mm. are dealing with some post-traumatic slave disorder like you wouldn't believe. Yes. And then I heard somebody say post-traumatic racial disorder mm. recently. Mm. So we we got it we got we got it honestly, and that plays on us, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I tell folks, George Floyd isn't the first, no. and he for sure isn't going to be the last. No. And we can protest from here till we leave this world, mm -hmm. but it's going to always be a practice of dishonoring and disrespecting black men and let me not discount black women being um dishonored and disrespected as well you know i just think what happened was the timing of everything zelda uh -huh. we we're, we we're in a pandemic with mm -hmm. this virus uh -huh. and we've been inundated with corona 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 so then when we had this thing come up with all these attacks on black people murdering of black people it gave us something to focus on so we took all this pent-up energy we all had over the last three months and now it's like this is our cause this is what we're gonna we're gonna talk about. And now you're sitting at home. And remember, if you wasn't addicted to television before, you are now. Okay. Because that's all we had. To, that was our only outlet, you right. know. Right. And so you looking, you watching this video of a man who breath is slowly leaving his body. Right. He's saying, "I can't breathe." He's right. saying, "Mama, I need you." And we watched it as human beings. And if you're a mother, you saw your son, you know? Mm -hmm. If you are a, a father, you saw your son. If you, you are a sister or a brother, you saw your sibling, you know? George represents, because we all got a George in our family, right. you know? That person who kind of lived, lived a life that was a little you know, <laughs> different. Yeah. But you still loved them. Right. They were you still family. loved them. You know? They were and family. he deserved to live. Right. He deserved to live. And how and when it it hit me when I saw the picture of him and his daughter sitting in the car. Because of course oh, I saw me. Yeah, I saw me. I know you did. That's why when I did a post on it, I said it could have been me. Yes. Uh, it could have been me. Anaya uh, yes. not grown up knowing her father. Absolutely. Like and I remember back in, I remember Zelda back in um, 2016, we had just left my, it was, it was Labor Day. Me and my daughter had just left my mom's house and my mom lives on the Southeast side of Chicago. And we were on Jeffrey Boulevard and the police pulled me over because my car was shutting down. And when he got to my car, I said, officer, I'm glad you pulled me over because my car is shutting down, you know? Instead of him saying, well, do you need me to call AAA? He was like, sir, show me your license and registration. Ooh, inhumane. Right. 
And so it's a holiday. It's like eight o'clock at night. My car is breaking down. My daughter is right next to me. And I got disrespected. Right. So mm. that's what I mean about it really hit home for a whole lot of us. Mm -hmm. It really hit home, you know. And then fast forward, now we are really thinking about the Juneteenth, you know, um, celebration mm -hmm. and what that meant to us mm -hmm. and how that was our 4th of July holiday, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I love the celebrations. Mm -hmm. I love the celebrations. And now what's next, Zelda? What's next? And for me as a, prof as a clinician, it's helping people get through this. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at right now. And I, I appreciate the fact that you are willing to go beyond your call of duty as a clinician in a, in a clinical setting, but also in a community setting because not everyone is able to get to the clinic to get the services that you have to offer. Yeah. And the fact yeah. that you are not just saying, well, if you can't come to me in the office, I can't see you. And that speaks volumes because yeah. it takes a community. And I, and I greatly appreciate that. Uh, we've got some callers on the line and oh, I, yeah, okay. they, they want to talk about racism and mental health and how it's affected them. Let, let's go to the phone line, area code 773 221 you are live on the Female Solution Grand Rising. What's your name, where you're calling from, and what's your comment on racism and mental health and how it's affected you? Yes, greetings to our brother Kali. I would just say, um, you know, uh, Dianetics auditing is a very effective way of resolving a lot of psychological issues. What did you call it, Dianetics what? Auditing. Dianetics auditing. Are you familiar with that, uh, um, Khalid? I never heard of it. Dianetics. I've never heard of it before. Let me cut this thing down. Yeah. Dianetics auditing. And what is that? Yes. And what is that? That's something from the Church of Scientology that the nation is uh, uh, does. Uh, they have a, a uh, like, a, uh, they're authorized by the Church of Scientology. They're the only um, group that's authorized to do the dynamics auditing. Uh, that's like a religious group. And, uh, you know, people who have experienced dynamics auditing, uh, they swear by it as being a very effective uh, methodology in um, helping them resolve psychological issues. Oh. And, and uh, I think it should be mandatory for every law enforcement person in the country to mm. uh, have a dynamics auditing session recorded at least once every year so that we're clear as to where their head is at. Mm. You know? Where can we get that information? Does the public have access um, to a, di a diametics auditing? I never heard of it. Does the public have uh, access to that? By, um, Oh, Ron Hubbard. oh, okay. It should be a, a national register of all the people who own guns, whether they be in law enforcement, they be civilians. And like uh, Michael Bloomberg said about uh, background checks for gun owners, it should be um, you know mandatory that everyone is identified since um, Bill Gates is so keen about tracking and tracing people, we need to track and trace every single gun that's out there. Okay. And every single person who presumably owns the gun. Mm. How long does a does a, a diametics auditing session take? Um, it can take about an hour or longer, maybe. Okay. Uh, H have you had I've it? Never been, I've never been pre-cleared for a diametics audit, but I know that it's very effective as something to all of them. Well, when you when you when when you when you when you think about it, um, let us know. But I want you to comment on that. What, uh, Khalid? What kind of uh, procedures or sessions are available to the general public when they are stressful and and they need some immediate help? 
do you have something available or a technique or something that they can try that they can utilize that will help them immediately and for future reference what what's available right well a lot of us clinicians do you know um due to covid um are doing zoom sessions we've been mm -hmm. uh, we've been approved so like i'm a clinician through dcfs so it was approved back in march that we could do you know facetime zoom or skype sessions with our clients because typically it's not it's not um the preferred method they rather you know be in person face to face but because of safeties and you know safety issues and precautions mm -hmm. it's like well why not you know okay. so what happens is i think this is going to be a new wave mm -hmm. and, and teletherapy has been coming into place slowly but surely mm -hmm. but now because of the pandemic it's in place so I know a lot of clinicians are, who are doing Zoom sessions now. And it's it's an adjustment. Mm. It's an adjustment, you know, trying to make sure that, you know, the setup is right, make sure the background is okay, make sure if there's anybody in the house with you, they're not disturbing you, okay. you know, and to help the client really focus in on, hey, I'm not there in person with you, but I'm present. Mm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what's going on with you. Because of course the phone can feel impersonal. Mm -hmm. Video mm -hmm. can feel impersonal. But when it's your only um, intervention or your only alternative, then you got to make do what you got to make do with. And as long as the continuity of the session is in place, why not? Mm -hmm. So what I'm seeing in doing these Zoom um, sessions is that anxiety levels are really high mm. Mm. despair is high mm. folks are worried mm. you know if you have elderly parents you're worried about them because you can't you know i know people who are who parents are in nursing homes mm. and they can't mm. go and see them yes and hospital and too. hospital too so like say if you got sick with corona and, and and you were really severely sick you can't even be visited by family members mm. you know I, I heard a story or read a story this couple had been married 60 something years mm. both of them got corona and they were hospitalized at the same time no. but they couldn't be with each other oh no so you spent all this lifetime your whole adult life with this human being and then at the end this this virus takes you out and you can't even have that last touch or that last kiss that's so, serious trauma absolutely so when you're hearing these stories just as a regular viewer you're watching the news you're on the internet you're hearing these messages how can that not okay. take you under how can it not then we're worried about our kids you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then we went one day, we out and about, it's like the next week, stay in. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're human beings used to being out and about. Mm -hmm. Now, luckily it happened towards, uh, unluckily, it happened towards the end of winter where we're kind of used to being in anyway. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. you see, now that it's all gotten warmer, yeah. people are out and about and they like i don't care mm -hmm. i'm not gonna wear a mask mm -hmm. but what happens is when winter start when late fall winter comes back mm -hmm. then it's um predicted that we're gonna have that second wave mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. now it's like man my kid going to school how is that gonna be mm -hmm. me uh, somebody like me who works from home when we had to go back to the office and I work in a hospital setting, mm -hmm. how was that going to be for us? Yeah. So see, that brings anxiety, oh, you know? Yeah. Then you like, I've been off of work, you know, for people who lost their jobs. Now I got to go back to work. I got to pay bills that were three months behind. So every part of this is anxiety based. Mm -hmm. So you need an outlet to get it out. Yes. And, and then, and, and you know we talked about this last month people are losing friendships 
couples are fighting more. Yes. So the thing, the people you would have turned to in your stressful moments, now you're fighting with them because you're anxious and, 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 and on edge. They're anxious and they're on edge, mm -hmm. and now you're fighting. Mm. So it's like, what's your outlet? Yeah. What's your outlet? Yeah. Healthy outlet at that. Yeah. That's so it's a lot. Yeah, it's it's a lot to deal with, and, and most of us are not equipped with Correct. the mental faculties we need because this incubation, this quarantine time has been a time to go within and connect to the source, as Kwame Sunhorse would say, who's still on the line with us, and take that time to connect and listen to the inner spirit, the inner voice, and what we need to be doing, not staring in front of the TV all day and, and, and listening to all the negativity that's coming through it as part of the national, international programming that keeps us in chaos and confusion. You start your day out with that and then it just permeates everywhere you go. You see the Absolutely. and everything. And you wonder why Absolutely. you see what you do. Absolutely. And and you lose Absolutely. relationships over that because we think differently. Yes. Uh, and it's destroying families. Yes. It's destroying relationships. So what did we do? Yes. Uh, if you just tuned yeah. in this morning, you're listening to uh, the Female Solution, Racism and Mental Health with our veteran prof mental health professional and clinician, Khalid Scott. If you'd like to join the conversation, 515-605-9325, press one to speak. As we go to the phone lines, uh, area code 312-671. You are live on the Female Solution, Grand Rising, where you're calling from, what's your comment? as it relates to racism and mental health. We don't even have to learn uh, who else. We don't die, we multiply back to our forever. And that's when the lake comes, Shalom. Grand Rising. Zelda, how you doing? I'm wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for jo joining us. This is Minister Robert Floyd Plump, is it not? Yes, it is Minister Robert Floyd Plump, and I want Brother Scott to know First of all, how you doing? I'm a veteran. I'm a Vietnam veteran. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Yes. I still going all the time. You probably come over there and say, I want to make sure I can keep in touch with you. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. he's not at the office. He, Dr. Min, uh, uh, Minister Plum, he's not at the office. He's doing Zoom calls, so you can't go to the VA because they're not letting anybody in. He's that's what he's talking about. He's he's taking calls uh, for um, uh, over the phone and for Zoom. Now, uh, Khalid, is that for uh, the general? I know it's not for the general public. It's only for veterans. So if veterans are not coming or have not been to the clinic, can they still contact you if they have issues? Yeah, for the, the, the clients on my caseload, I call them every week. Mm, and okay. what was happening, well, basically, the, the hospital was opening up slowly but surely, but mm. were precautions. So before, we were, like, putting off appointment, appointments, uh -huh. but now they're setting appointments up as the summer progresses and doing a lot of social distancing and things of that nature. So if some, a vet needs to come in for an emergency, come in, you know, our emergency room is open 24 hours a day. Okay. But just for general um, social work stuff, we're just telling our veterans to call us. Okay, and what number would they call? Yeah, well, it depends on who your caseworker is. Oh, okay. So yeah. in his case, if he wanted to see someone, would he just call the veterans uh, hospital and ask to be connected to a clinician? Is that how that works? Right. Well, what happened was like, say if someone said, you know what, I want mental health services. Uh -huh. um, you have to, you have to call because we have to, they would have to do a benefits check to see if you qualify for the benefits, okay. you know, and more than likely if you completed basic training and whatever you would qualify. And then, you know, they would assign you a primary care physician. And then of course, like when any primary care physician, they would have to send you a referral for the mental health clinic. Okay. How long yes. does the whole process take? Um, 
I'm not with this COVID. I don't know. Don't know. I'm not don't sure. Even, why don't I even ask that question? But it should it, it should probably probably like within a two week period, okay. at least to get uh because uh, in fact the mental health team there they're doing phone sessions. Mm, okay. So probably within a two week time frame, give or take. Okay. So did you get that, uh, Minister Plump? Did you get? I did. Uh, I want to comment on uh, racism really is uh, fear and it's hate. It's being taught by uh, the uh, white people down to their children. And that's a, a, a problem, you know. Uh, and I also wanted, you know, a problem that within them, they have to solve that problem with themselves and turn it around and show respect, which is also can be developed into love. Happy belated uh, June Chase Day, and I appreciate you, Zelda, uh, and the female solution. It, it wouldn't have been no day without you. <laughs> and happy belated uh, Father's Day, too, uh, Brother Scott. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm thankful, uh, Zelda, that you was the mother of Zelda Robinson, with the mother of the day and the woman, and we call her a woman, which is the mother earth and my sister, you are the greatest, just like the old female solution. And uh brothers and sisters can keep in touch with us through the yeah. foundation dot org. For more information, call me for jobs or businesses at three one two six seven one two seven seven three. And that's for all the jobs for brothers and sisters that wanna help us and our purpose of Thank you so much, uh, Minister Robert Floyd Plump, for calling in and sharing that information. Um, we, I've just got a text that uh, Brother Kwame wanted to comment on something that was said, but it's 831 and we've got to take a quick commercial break. So as soon as we come back, we're going to take some more calls uh, from uh, Kwame Sumhorse, who's joining us here on The Female Solution with Khalid Scott veteran mm -hmm. mental health professional and we're talking about racism ment and mental health Ooh, so you stay close here 515-605-9325 press one to speak okay. it is monday june 22nd happy earth day birthday born day if today is your day it's a very <laughs> good day we appreciate you and we thank you for joining us here on facebook.com zelda speaks on social media on instagram zelda speaks the number two and you and on Instagram it's the same Zelda speaks to you and I'm speaking to myself right now I'm listening to that commercial that we just came from this is voices in your head the promo not a commercial uh, voices in your head how do we handle the voices in our heads that's driving us crazy <laughs> what do we do what do we do how do we do yes. it? what do we do um Okay, I so I do, but I want to hear thing, that. Right. One of the things that I do suggest to people who are not assigned to a mental health um, professional is to do a lot of self talk and praying. Out loud. Out loud. And if, out loud. Absolutely. And what that looks like is. You know how when you self-talk and you positively self-talk to yourself, it can save you a whole lot of trouble. Mm. Such as if you know you're about to do something that you know better, mm -hmm. and you say, so it looks like this. I have that butter pecan ice cream in the freezer. You got a camera in here. I'm my hot. What? What? A camera. Get out of my head. Get out of my head right now. Stop. Put on my business like that. Come on now. Right. I was right. thinking it anyway. I think everybody I loves butter pecan ice cream. My favorite in the so world. What right. Oh. So what happens is you tell yourself, you know what? Not now. Not now. Mm -hmm. Today I kind of went over my calorie intake, but I'll save it for. Friday afternoon. You know what I'm saying? I'll be mindful of my calorie intake on Friday. Okay. Plus, it's the weekend. It's been a long week. So, that'll be my treat to myself. Okay. So, you just talk yourself into doing something 
that's going to be more beneficial to you. Okay. See what I'm saying? Okay. Or you tell yourself, you know what, instead of me watching this Netflix movie, let me go outside and take a walk around the neighborhood. <laughs> you know? So the two hours I would have sat down and watched the movie, Come on let now. me put on my headphones yes. and just walk around the neighborhood. Yes. You know? Yes. Or to say, you know what, God? I don't like the world right now. Mm. I don't like your other kids and how they acting right now, God. And God, I need you to get people in order because mm. only you can. Mm. So God, let me stay in order so I could be one less person you have to get right. Mm. Come on, but man. help my brothers and sisters out here in the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm. God, tell me what I need to do to participate in order to make this world better. Because mm. It's not, it's going to take more than one person. It's going to take more than one race. And the wonderful thing about this racial um, upheave we've having, it's been wonderful to see other races joining in. Yes. It's been wonderful to see other races joining in. And it, it is so funny. I was telling someone about this, that isn't it funny that the face of possible pros, um, productivity in this situation is George Floyd, mm. who, if you looked at his background, he had some challenges. Yes. He had some challenges. I remember when, he, when the story first broke, someone sent me a message that he, had, he was a porno actor, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, wow. And That's then he, had, he was on drugs. And, and I'm like, see, that's the enemy trying to distract. Yes, yes. distract. But sometimes me. God yes. uses an everyday flawed person, think about it, yes. to say, hey, hey, he's just like all the rest of us flawed, Come but we now. still have a purpose. We still right. have a mission. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And let me use him to, to, to set it off. And to say, you know what? Hey, let me start making things a little bit better. Because, and especially us Black folk, people of color, we're natural born survivors. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're natural born survivors. Because we've had to. We had to be. Right. But it gets a little, we're, we're tired. We're tired. Right. And, and we're tired of always being, turning the other cheek. Oh. We're tired of always accepting the apologies. We're tired of always hearing that it's going to get better. Just be, just do better. Right. I remember when that incident happened with the man, the bird, the, 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 the black guy who was a bird watcher in Central Park and mm -hmm. a graduate of Harvard, you know, university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's bird watching in Central Park and the young white woman you know, he tells her, hey, you, your dog is supposed to be on the leash. You know, he might attack me. Mm -hmm. And the woman getting mad and using her privilege, mm -hmm. not only her white privilege, but my female privilege mm -hmm. that could have cost that man his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And later in the week, he was on The View with his sister who posted the video that he sent to her with the interaction. And they asked him, do you accept Amy Cooper's apology? And he said, yes. And I was mad at him, mm. Zelda. Mm. I was mad at him when he did that. Because it's like, there we go again. We're letting them off. But then it hit me all over again. You've been taught that. Part of our resiliency mm -hmm. is saying that I'm not going to let you have power over me. Mm. Because if I stay mad at you, mm. you took my power away from yes. me. Yes, yes. But if I can tell you that you don't matter to me, I have my power. All right, now. Now, that's a different way of looking at it. Yes, yes. The and it's the point. most positive way of looking at it. Yes. Because the minute we give our power away, then it's over with. You walking around angry about something that somebody's already forgotten about it and don't even care about it. And you can't yes. in that negative energy 
with you. Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, okay, let's take another call. 773-977. You're live on the Female Solution. Grand Rising, what's your name, where you're calling from, and what's your comment as it relates to racism and mis mental health? Good morning. Um, my name is Lois. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, South Shore area. Good morning, Lois. Um, Welcome. Uh, good morning, y'all. My comment is that I was under the impression someone said that racism and homosexuality were signs of mental illness in the 70s. Uh, racism is still uh, a mental illness. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that it's not just something that was from white people, who might really don't see a white, but we're, we're something that's racism from our own uh, so called black people. Mm -hmm. um, that's my comment. She, had, she asked an excellent question in dealing with the, the racism and just like I said, the ill six line. But uh, Brian Rise is the brother Scott. And you work with the VA. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And, and for me, I'm overstanding like brother Trump. I'm also a Vietnam veteran. And I've worked with veterans. And what we had developed here in Georgia, where there's another Vietnam vet that owned some land and he had some cabins. And what we had was we did a, what was called a reboot camp. Mm. Because you send a man to a boot camp and you train him to do what he does when he goes away to fight a war. But then when we come back, we're not given but a discharge and, and put out there. And if we look at statistically 40 to 50 percent of the black homeless people in Georgia right now are black veterans. And we're just seeing that they have served this country, but this country no longer serves them. Mm. And mm. the key is, is that looking at this and, and looking at, you know, your, your excellent saying that you have Zoom and that, but what are the vets that are homeless that have no access to, to technology mm. that are out of the street and, and they're, they're living from, from mouth, you know, from day to day yeah. out there on the street. Yeah. And we're looking at this, and every 22 minutes, a vet commits suicide in this country. Every 22 minutes, a veteran kills himself because he can't take the pressure of what he's had to live with within himself. Wow. And what indigenous people call the shadow man is that in each of us, there is a shadow man that is brought out to go out and do battle and defend and do what we do. But we have to understand how to bring that shadow man back, to bring that man, that brother, that father, that uncle, that wife, that, that, that sister. Bring her back into the, the community. And this is why we think that creating a reboot camp. And we found that coming and bringing the, uh, the vet into nature and, and mm. working with things and helping him. Because what we did was when those vets that were there were getting their analysis to, to say that they had 100% disability, the thing was that a veteran could get 100% disability mentally through evaluations and through the VA, but he can get a concealed weapon permit because he was never institutionalized in the institution. That is the way the law was written. And so you have veterans walking around that have disabilities mentally and carrying concealed weapons. Mm. That's what that brother was talking about, you know, the, the, the thing about evaluating police. Because a lot of those veterans are on the police force. Oh. From giving card blocks to carry weapons that take lives and they're mentally unstable. Really? So what we're looking at is how do we help our, our, with the VA, but the racism is that, you know, you got to put an E on, on racism, is that it, it's erased. Erase it. How do we erase it? We have to bring back the human that's inside of each one of those people. They weren't born that way. Mm -hmm. Through society and, it, and it, it's mental slavery, we put our people into this. You're born free. You choose the, the, the essence of slavery which you commit yourself to. Mm. And I, I just wanted to say, you know, I commend you for what you're doing with the social work and the things in which you're doing and helping in the middle of. But there has to be a okay. thing that we have to begin to do in each one because even with the things
things in which I'm, I'm, I'm working with and, and bringing people back to nature and, and helping those that are needing. Because I'm a, a prime example. I went in the VA in 1981, heroin and alcohol, and, and changed my life for the past 39 years. But it was so one spirit that, that helped me to see me. Wow. Do you all offer anything mm -hmm. like that, um, Khalid? Uh, are there any like grounding experiences? Is there anything clinical outside of, or, or that you recommend, like what uh, Brother Kwame just suggested? In regards to mental health services? Yes. Um, like veterans who can't. Well, of course. You know, technology, yeah. Like the veterans. Well, who what happened? Technology, yeah. Well, it's tricky because like like the when he said like a homeless veteran, you know, the the homeless veteran has to come in and let us know that they're homeless. I work in a homeless program. So what happens is the veterans come in and say, hey, I've been homeless. We get them CHA um, Section 8 apartments, mm -hmm. you know, and then when they're in, when we got them housed, no matter what their circumstances is, they're housed because President Obama started the initiative where he didn't want any veteran to be homeless. And then when they're in our program, of course, we resource them for substance abuse mm -hmm. services and treatment and mental health, as well as medical and dental. Mm. But they have to let us know that they have an issue because we can't read minds, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is it a perfect system? No, you know? But one thing is that for anybody across the board, veteran or not, black, white, what have you, you have to be ready to receive services. Mm. You got to want the services and you got to be willing to participate because I might be the most gifted clinician, but if you're not ready to do the work, there's nothing I can do for you. Right. There's right. nothing I can do for you, you know? Right. And again, I talk about self-resiliency all the time mm -hmm. because everybody can't connect to me. But and eventually, even if you have a counselor, you still have to learn coping strategies and coping mechanisms mm -hmm. in order to survive. So that's why I always with my clients talk to them about how do you heal yourself? I'm not available. When it's two o'clock in the morning and you wake up out of a nightmare, uh -huh. or it's Sunday afternoon at three o'clock and you're feeling depressed because it's raining outside, mm -hmm. and you just like, wow, why am I living? Mm -hmm. You know, what do we need to teach you in order for you to cope to say, I still want to live? And I still not only want to live, I want to thrive. What are some I of those? I want to have a fruitful life. What are some of those coping? You said what now? What are some of those coping mechanisms? Um, again, the self-talk. Mm. Again, praying to your higher power. Again, doing healthy things, healthy eating, healthy activities. Um, having that one person, one person that you know, I could talk. Call them twelve o'clock noon or 12 o'clock midnight mm -hmm. so that I know they're going to listen and they're not going to judge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody, and I think I mentioned this before when I'm on, on your show, Zelda, get you an auxiliary, um, um, an auxiliary um, get you a board of directors, a personal board of directors. These are people in your life who look out for you wow. and you look out for them. Wow. You know, get your committee of loved ones that's around you. Mm. You know, um, it was funny yesterday, the people who I thought I was closest to didn't even call me and wish me a happy Father's Day. Oh. But Facebook, thousands of people called oh. me wishing me a happy um, Father's Day. No. <laughs> And what I realize is I don't take it personal because people going through it. 
Oh yeah. But I build a bigger, I built such a big village that when those can't do it, I still got backups. Mm -hmm. I still mm -hmm. got backups. And understand too that people world people will let you down. It's not if they're gonna let you down, it's when will they let you down. Yeah. And we can't that's take where your self-resiliency got to come in. It's yeah. got to come in. Because people are gonna disappoint you. And it's one, it's one spirit that will never disappoint you, and it's that's that's God. That's God. Whatever you choose to call it. Whatever you choose to call it. That's it. Uh, but again, uh, right. Yeah. Right. But again, seek help. Go to psychologytoday.com um, um, and look up therapists in your community. All you got to do is type in your, um, your um, zip code and they'll give you a listing of all the clinicians that's in your area. What that's website? www. www yeah, www. Excuse me, psychologytoday.com. Psychologytoday.com. And they will give you a list of clinicians in your area. Yes. Okay. Also, could I, could I, could Go ahead. Yes. Okay. And what also could be done, and I think he gave excellent, you know, referencing. But you can also go because, you know, us being our people, we've created that which is most liking to ourselves, the Navy side, the American Black Psychologist. Oh, yes. And, and AB Psy is, is, is founded because we have people, you know, it's, it's good that we can deal with, with the psychological, but better understood is being able to go to someone that understands the post-traumatic slave syndrome. Yes. And yes. does not recognize the post-traumatic slave syndrome. And so being able to go to that which is most likely, that's why I was commending Bobby E. Wright and starting the Garfield Mental Health Center. You know, we have to begin to look at all uh, uh, we have those minds that can help our minds because we have to look at it from our view as not so one that a the, the American Black Soldiers Association. Because even with DSM four and DSM five, you can look in that book from from front to back, and you will not find a definition for racism because it is not a mental illness. Oh. It is something in which is ingrained into the, the people are being trained to say that white fragility, white privilege, white, white superiority, white supremacy. It's not a mental illness defined in their way because it's their creation. Mm -hmm. so and they are dead and long gone. And the institution of it right. is still well, here. What we're, what we're having to do is we have to have our own people to define how we see this impact on us as human beings. And this is the part in which we're looking at. Because, you know, what he was saying, excellent too, is you have to get recovery coaches, you have to get peer coaches, because these are where <laughs> Colorado Springs, and it's a Native American group that created this, in which they used the 12 steps and the 12 spiritual steps to begin to work with the mental illness coming out of the prison, coming out of the military, and the ones that are, are walking the streets and having those people in place, either like you said, that you can pick up and call because you need guidance in how to begin to restructure yourself you were taught to hate now you got to begin to be taught to love yourself awesome 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 valid point. excellent excellent wow uh Khalid, that is um I, that is something i'd never heard of was uh recovery coaches and i know that in your line of work as a clinician have you would you consider yourself as a recovery coach it sounds like something it might be <laughs> well, the job I had before I started at the VA, I was a supervisor of recovery coaches. Oh, wow. And basically, yeah, yeah. So basically what a recovery coach is, <clears throat> the initial premise of it is, 
let someone who's been where you've been help you do your recovery. Okay. So at the at the agency that I worked at prior, it was called Task, and a okay. lot of the staff members were people in recovery. Okay. So they were were hired to help recovering addicts live a better life based on the fact that hey i did it let me show you and take you through the steps mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me to help you get through it mm -hmm. so it's a wonderful premise that works and mm -hmm. it's phenomenal you know yeah. because we realize that <clears throat> we need assistance we need support and we need the village and if i've been where you've been that's even better like right now Zelda, I am booked solid. I know you are. I, I, know I have you. a waiting list. I know As you. As a black male therapist, I have a waiting list now. Yes. And I love it, but we we need more. So yes. I'm getting my younger, um, my youngins to go and get their master's degrees and get their licenses okay. so that they can, because in 13 more years, I'm out of here. Okay. You know? <laughs> And I want to need know, a new breed to take over. Yeah, and I want to know what strategies after we go to the. We, we got a couple of callers. It's I know you have to leave soon. It's almost nine o'clock, but I want to get a couple of these calls. And I want to know what strategies you use personally as a coach when you take all that information and you've got to digest and then you've got to circulate and percolate in the world and you've got all this on your shoulders i want you to answer that when we come back we're going to the phone area code 314 381 you are live on the female solution what's your you name know, uh, when you talk about racism is it the act or is it the color of the skin mm. Racism mm. is not, not limited to color of skin. Racism is an act. And when people talk about what they uh, describe as racism, no matter where they are, one can go around the world and see that same act being uh, instigated against other people and it has right. color of skin. So racism is an act. Mm. I, I, I agree with that. Uh, what yeah. Thank you so much for calling and sharing that information. We greatly appreciate that. Yes, it is uh, exactly what you said. Let's through, how do you detox from all the information that you take in on a daily basis? Yeah, um, basically, I, I walk. I I walk my talk. Mm. So if I'm telling people to be mindful of self care. It's because I'm mindful of self-care. Mm. I've recently lost 10 pounds over the past month. You know what I'm saying? Because- the gain weight. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's because I'm on a mission. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, my, my, my daughter is about to be a grown woman in August. Mm -hmm. And I want to see grandkids one day. Okay. So I have to live a free, healthy lifestyle so i live on life you know covid reminded me that you can't take nothing or nobody <clears throat> for granted mm -hmm. i do my self-talk i pray every day zelda mm -hmm. i pray every day mm -hmm. and i don't do a selfish prayer i pray for you and everybody else mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i listen to my music because music calms me down mm -hmm. You know, and especially my jazz music. Yes. And I talk a lot. Not only do I talk as a professional, I talk personal. Because for me and the friends I have, they understand I need to vent. I need to get out my frustrations. You know, I need to yell sometime. And, and one of the biggest stress busters that I have, I, and I told you this before, I argue with God. Mm. I have arguments with God. And what it looks like is, God, come on. This doesn't make sense to me. Mm. Why? I know I'm not supposed to question you, but I need you to answer these questions so I'm clear because you gave me a mission to help others, but I can't help them if I'm in the dark. And he always answers me. Never fails. Never, never fails. fails. Never fails. So that's the number one thing I would suggest. Argue with God. 
argue with them, All debate right. with God. And it, it helps me. <laughs> now you will hear the uh, closing in the background for those who are uh, joining us online on the uh, Female Solution Switchboard. I just have to play that because uh, that's the ending of the show just so that they'll know that the show is over. But we're going to stay on and, and, and talk a little bit about. So if you can, feel free to stay. If you can, I know you have a, a, a client low. Uh, if you want to share more, we greatly appreciate it. So if you want to give us a, a closing thought um, sure. for our viewers and listeners. So if you're on Facebook and you're, uh, and you're watching us, we're going to stay on a little while after um, uh, Brother Khalid leaves. And if you're on the switchboard, um, you, you'll stay on, stay on as long as the switchboard allows you. Then you can come over to facebook.com uh, forward slash Zelda speak. So Brother Khalid, take it away. Okay, my last um, thoughts um, that I want to leave you all with is this. Um, I am in love with Black people. Mm. Mm. I am so in love with you all. And the reason why I'm so in love is because you make me laugh when I want to be mad at you. Mm. You make me cry when I should be smiling. Even when you disappoint me and you do the craziest things, I think about what has been role modeled to you. So why wouldn't you do things a certain way? Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I love you all because of you, all of our resiliency. Mm -hmm. That no matter what we get up and we get busy, Mm -hmm. We do what we have to do to make it. Mm -hmm. For me, some of the best conversations I have are with the most zaniest people in the world <laughs> because they live life on their terms. Yes. They live life on their terms. Yes. And yes. somebody like me who is very structured, mm -hmm. I need people in my life who are a little bit more free-spirited, mm -hmm. so it helps mm -hmm. with the balance. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael Jordan and the Bulls wouldn't have won if all the players were like Michael Jordan because everybody would have been hogging the ball. Yes. But Phil Jackson understood, let me take collective talents to win six championships. Mm -hmm. We all are champions. We just got to be reminded. Yes. Black folks don't ever forget that you're champions. Yes. And I love you, and I'm, I'll leave you with that right now. Thank you so much. You are listening to the voice of veteran and mental health professionalist, Khalid Scott. And today our discussion was on racism and health and mental yeah. health and how it affects you. So thank you so much, Khalid. I know you got a heavy load this morning. All right. Our prayers are with you. <laughs> thank you so much. We greatly appreciate you. We greatly appreciate. Till you. next time. Yes, next and time. when when is um when is your birthday and when is Anaya's birthday? Uh, my birthday is July sixteenth. Oh wow! And my baby's birthday is right um, August twenty first, and that same week she leaves for college. Oh so my! So Zelda, I'm gonna need you. I'm, I'm here. Gonna need you. I'm here. <laughs> Just tell me what I need to do. Just tell uh, me absolutely what bring you. Over. Bring some heralds over here or something. You know? <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go to 2325 West 79th Street where I met a brother Dan's Soul Food Chicago or something like that. They got vegan food that tastes just yeah. like chicken off the chain. Yes. 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 That's what I'm yes. gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. Absolutely. I ain't doing Absolutely. The My husband the cook in the family. But I will go to Dan's or Soul Vegetarian to get me some food because we got to get off the we got to get off this chicken because it's killing us. I love you too, too, but we got to move forward. But anyway, thank you so much. You can count on me. Tell the princess Anaya I said shalom, and I look forward to seeing her on her way to college. And thank you so much. Greatly appreciate. Thank you, everybody. Take care. All right. All thank, right. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was Brother Khalid Scott, thirty-year mental health professional. He has a heavy load today because there are people all over the world, especially our veterans who need his services. And in the words of Dr. Maya Angelou, before you face
the day, face the spirit that is within you, that is the God force that is within you. And he said something very powerful about how the zany people in his life keep him grounded because my little brother was homeless. And even though he was homeless, he was houseless. He was not homeless because the home is within. He taught me things by being homeless that I never would have known or uh, been paid more attention to as I, I observed him in his way of living. He was more grounded than I was because he lived on the ground literally every day. And so when I would go to see him, he taught me not to judge him because he spoke words of wisdom. I was like, boy, where did you hear that from? Oh, man, because he's, he's my little brother. He's five years younger than me. He's in his 50s late 50s but douglas robinson if you want to go see the uh trailer to the documentary uh go to youtube and type in doug robinson homeless documentary and, you, and you'll see that there and i want to just back up just a little bit we were talking a lot of bit about black people and racism and things of that nature and i love what the caller said it's an act and this is not about black even though it appears to be, because that's a distraction. It's not about white, even though it appears to be, because it's a distraction. It's about the human spirit. You cannot put a skin color on the human spirit. And the powers that be, the elite, have us caught up in the color of our skin. But baby, we all, you slice us, we're all gonna bleed red. It, it, you see my veins, they're, they're green, right? But when you open it up and oxygen gets to it, we it's blue, but when we open up and allow the oxygen in, it's red. It's red. And we have got to get to the point where we stop allowing people, places, and programming and messages in our heads. And how do we do that? with a new kind of programming. As Brother Kwame uh, Sun Horses, we have got to get grounded. That's what you hear on Viata's show. That's what you'll hear tomorrow on uh, Let's Talk About It with Maya Ika. That's what you'll hear on Wednesday when you hear Naima Latif's show uh, with uh, Kareem Hamid, Repairing re uh, Family Relationships. That's what you'll hear Thursday on Family Matters with Wendy, Wendy City Williams Deloach, Esquire, our attorney. That's what you'll hear Friday on Health and Wellness with Viata. And that's what you'll hear on Saturday with a variety of hosts uh, that rotate, uh, traveling with Deborah this past Saturday. Um, Love, Joy, Empowers and uh, Mama Joy and, and all of the sisters of the microphone. If we want something different, we have to do something outrageous. Really? Yes, we have got to stop allowing the programs that have been programmed in our consciousness, instead of, as he said, I love that. Instead of watching a two hour Netflix, Lord, don't get me started on a series. I, I, that's why I don't watch series because I watched four se a, a, a series on an attorney because I'm, I'm working on a project and each series had four, four, 10 videos. So that's 40 hours per session per series no no the series so one series one part episode one through ten ten twenty thirty four do you know how much program programming that is and we wonder why we act the way we act because we are constantly allowing people to put things in our head we are constantly digesting information that is not of our best interest so that's what happened and we wonder why we act the way we act that is why and when we wake up to the fact that this is not about a black and white thing, this is about a consciousness, a level of consciousness, a, a way of thinking that will take us out of 3D, where we're living in fear, walking around with masks, and for those who wear them, that's fine, because I wear it when I'm out in public cause, or when I go to the store, because it's mandatory, so you don't have a choice in that. But you do have a choice. And when you get connected to that source, 
whatever you choose to call it, Allah, God, you, hey, wife, hey, Jesus, Jehovah, Jireh, whatever you call it. it, that is entirely up to you. But when you get grounded, sit under a tree, get somewhere in nature, turn off the TV, go for a walk. Like I said, put your headphones on, listen to some jazz. And I like jazz because you can think when there are words to music because, you know, the music will take us back to the past and it's the past that keeps us trapped in bondage. We want to release the past and move forward. How do I know this? I'm experiencing this myself right now, as I'm, I'm sure many are. I'm not the only one. It has been a pleasure to be here with you today. I hope that I, we've shared something that will make your life a little bit more tolerable during this uh, transition, the, the new normal. And I hope you'll share this video with someone and have a conversation with the elder today and learn something. And what you learn, share it. Share what you've learned anyway. Each one, teach one. Okay? Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned to your next mindfulness moment show. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Love you. Namaste. Hotel. Shalom.